Hello everyone, my name is Nicola Penfold and I'm here to introduce my new book to you. Here it is, it's called Beyond the Frozen Horizon and it's got this very beautiful cover by the artist Kate Forrester. So what can I tell you about it? Well, like my book so far, these two, Where the World Turns Wild, here, and Between Sea and Sky, Beyond the Frozen Horizon is an ecological adventure story. It's also a journey, and it's a journey to Spitsbergen, an island in the remote archipelago of Svalbard, halfway between Norway and the North Pole. This book is set in the future, and in many ways it's quite an optimistic future, set after the world has taken great strides in tackling the climate and biodiversity or extinction crisis that we're facing now on planet Earth. The main character is a 13-year-old girl called Rory. Rory's been struggling a bit lately. She's not been that happy at school. She still misses her best friend who moved away a couple of years ago. Her parents have separated and she's adjusting to their two new homes and lifestyles. Her weeks with her career-driven mom who believes in progress and ambition and time with her dad who's got a job as a forester in a local woodland and believes the old ways are best. But this is all background. Raw is leaving all of this behind. She's going on the trip of a lifetime to the high Arctic. She's going with her mum, who's a geologist, and has been contracted to work on a new project extracting rare earth metals for use in green technology. Raw is going to see snow and ice. She's hoping to see polar bears and reindeer and Arctic foxes, maybe even whales, and the magical northern lights too, the Aurora Borealis. The place where Raw is going to be staying is a ghost town. It's an old coal mining town that's been abandoned many years ago. Raw expects it to be remote, cold, inhospitable, wild, and she doesn't expect there to be any other children there. And yet when she and her mum arrive, there were families there. There's a forgotten community who are not sure at all about the new mining project that Rory's mum has come to work on. Her mum's quickly drawn into her new job and Rory's kind of left to her own devices with one very clear rule. And that is that she must not go outside the town, make the town's main square by herself. And this is because of the risk of polar bears coming into the settlement. The other children are quickly caught up in their own games and act almost like Rory doesn't exist. And something is keeping Rory awake at night. Noises in the old building where she and her mum are staying. There's a voice in the darkness. Footsteps. Who could it be? I'm going to read you the very first few paragraphs of this story. Um, and they're from the first chapter, which is called Flight. I'd never been in the sky before. It feels unnatural a subversion of all the laws of physics and all the climate laws too. Humans don't belong in the air. But I hadn't reckoned on the excited twitch of my brain as the metal cylinder hurtled into the sky, above the clouds, looking down on England as we left it behind for six whole weeks. The box-like shapes of mums and my estate, with its new build apartments and neat green spaces, and my sprawling academy school glowing in the early morning light. Then more town buildings, the leisure centre, supermarket, hospital, sports stadium, and roads whirring with electric cars until a swathe of green like someone got a paint pot and threw it over the earth's surface. One of the new forests to suck up carbon and give wildlife a fighting chance to recover. The trees are a collage of shades and textures and different brush strokes. Alder, cherry, maple, birch, willow, hawthorn. Somewhere in the tangle of trees is Dad's wooden hut with a solar panelled roof and a tiny annex that's mine every second weekend. I pull myself away from the window. A book's open on the table in front of me. Creatures of the far north. It was Dad's gift to me for the trip, alongside a Polaroid camera that's sunshine yellow and little boxes of film, to capture your adventures, Dad had said. So there we go. That's the beginning of the story. And then it becomes this, this it carries, Rory carries on with her journey. Um, so she's flying and then she goes on a boat um, all the way to Spitsbergen. So I really hope you enjoy it if you take the trip to the high Arctic with Rory. Thank you so much for listening.